Hi and welcome to a special edition of The Juice. Um, a little while ago, one of our guests was supposed to be Goldie. Unfortunately, she passed away before she could be a guest on our show. Uh, we do have one of her best friends. I'm sure you know him very well. He is one of the most popular media personalities in Africa. We have Darren Lee here. Thank you very much too. Goldie was one of the most colourful artists that we did have in Africa. Um, everyone would remember her very, very extravagant videos, um, her very colourful costumes, and the fact that she was a free spirit. All right, so how have you been? How have you been? Are you good? Well, I'm not trying to evoke sympathy here or anything, but it's been really, a, it's been tough. That's, okay. what, that's how I put it, because, you know, I try and say, okay, I am going to get my mojo on and go out there and make things happen, and then after a while, and you, you know how it is, because yeah. a lot has been happening, but mm -hmm. I would say I am almost getting there, yeah. Yeah, bit by bit. Um, so do you mind talking a bit about, you know, like what happens? Because you're, we're hearing so many different things and um, obviously, you know, you, you're somebody that was very close to her. So just to set the record straight for people that, you know, probably are, are not quite sure exactly what happened. Okay, Goldie and I live together. You know, um, as of last year, you know, she got out of Big Brother and the reception was very bad. I'm going to say yeah. this. It we're going to talk about that. About that. Okay, yeah, yeah. so which is one of the reasons why I got really close to her because she's close to my family and, you know. But how did it happen? She came in, she landed at 3 o'clock and then, you know, um, Baba Keke's driver, Ken Yogo, she wanted mm. to surprise me actually. Mm. So she didn't, she didn't call or say anything. And I would say, fortunately for me, her brother happened to be around, her mm -hmm. younger brother. He just came in from school to visit. And then I was sleeping, and then five o'clock, she got to the house, and she crept in. She said I was sleeping, and then she just hit my bum. Ah, lonely Valentine, lonely <laughs> Valentine. I was like, ah, she's back. I was like, Grammy Award, babe. She said, look at your almond eyes, because she always called me almond eyes. Look at your almond eyes. You are lonely. I can feel it. I said, who is lonely? <laughs> me. I have people coming to take me out. You know, we're kidding. Mm -hmm. And she was so hyper. I remember this clearly. Like, just imagine me on stage, you know, adrenaline mm. pumping. She was like that. I was even bold about it. I was like, ah, may I just give this girl some more mm. space? You know, and then she just threw her bag. She jumped on me, hugged me, and then she come, 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 come. She just brought out her phone. Look, I have Ciara's manager's contact on my BB. We're going to do it something. I was like, ah! yes, yes, I remember, you know? I remember hearing she that took a story, picture yeah. with, And she was telling me, you know, you're going to be in the video and you will show Ciara that you can dance better <laughs> than her. I was like, yes. You know, and she was like, oh, what? You know, she was just all over the place. And then she went back into the room and walked up towards me. Now, the way she walked towards me, it sounded like, you know, like you've had a long flight and you're so animated and then jet lag. And she yeah. came to me and I said, ah, worrying for me. She just said, you're about worrying for me. And I said to myself, ah, Panadol, active mm, and you're probably advanced. Just tired I said, and, oh, you, know, you just... want? I started looking. She just lay on my bed because my bed was properly done. And she was like, eh, this is not Panadol, um, you know, treatment. My head, my head. She was just holding her head, my head. I just said, my regular head. So I started looking for it. And then she was like, Water, water. I just screamed. The housemaid, because the housemaid. So, so at that point, you were you were quite panicked because I was in, I was panicking a little, but it didn't strike me as anything serious. Mm. She just said, you know, she was just holding her head, and I just thought slight headache really, and she was just. I said, okay, Grace, Grace, water. As Grace was bringing the cup upstairs, she was lying down. She just sat up. My head, my head. Immediately, I just panicked. I was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? My head, my head. Oh my god, really? My head, my head is aching me. I was like, what? What? You know, she was like, unzip my dress. I just tore, she was wearing like a straight dress. I tore it off her back. Mm -hmm. And I started fanning her. She was like, don't stop, don't stop. My body is hot. And I screamed, Grace, eyes. You know, we broke the ice. I was wearing a turtle neck top. I just took it off, wrapped the ice and started touching. I was like, do you know my god, my head? And I remember clearly that she said, and she said, oh, really? my friend had this sort of headache and she died. I said, it's not your portion. You're not going to die. I reject this for you in Jesus' name. I started praying. She was like, call my dad. She just threw her phone at me. Call my dad. I just called her brother. Joshua, Joshua. You know, he ran up. She said, daddy, me daddy. Then immediately we got through to the dad. She was like, daddy, I'm bad. You're for me. You're in for me. Go on for me. That which, you know, like, daddy, pray for me. My yeah, head. Yeah. And she was rolling, you know, and we're fanning continuously. She was, she was obviously in so much pain. Eh? In so much pain. But, you know, she was just holding the head. And... We, we kept finding, I was putting eyes, and then she, it appeared like she was cooling off a bit. Yeah. She was like, ah, ah. I was like, don't worry, it's all right. So I was just talking to her, talking to her. And then her body just like started contorting. I, I don't know if I'm going to call it that. She just started doing, I just knew, I just screamed, he smiled, that's the dry hole. But he smiled, where are you? 
get the car. Yes, we just got into the taxi and we said, hospital, red in because that's a hospital. By the time I got her in, you know, the nurses were, oh, what's wrong? You should have called an ambulance. I just started screaming, help, help, you know. I, by the time I started screaming, doctors came around. I mean, she, it just wasn't the moment. I don't know if I'm saying the wrong things, really. But, you know, they kept administering and I was telling the nurses, that, please, please. And then the doctor now, one of the doctors who was really nice, just called me into a room and said, your friend is going to say, <laughs> she's not, uh, she's sleeping, she can't be dead. I said, she's, I said, she's not dead. The, that girl lying down there, she can't be dead. And then, you know, all of a sudden, nobody was doing anything. So I just Everybody went stopped. in and I just closed that, the partition. And I was just talking to her, could they please, please, please. Then people were coming in and out, it wasn't registering. Her parents came, Baba Keke came, everybody was crying. Oh, I just knew that they were... I imagine her parents were in shock as well. They were, her dad was just yeah. saying, ha, you know, Pimpe, this girl, you know, he was, he didn't, he was just distraught. Her stepmom was there. And then they just told me, we have to, you know, take her to, you know, you know how they do these things where you have to get to another hospital where they do the autopsy, yeah. they can't do it. I said, please, can you guys try again? You know, can you try and check? She might just be in a coma, she might be unconscious. Please just check. And then they started again. And then before I knew it, you know, they started to wrap the body. And then I was there. I remember, I remember clearly that Uti, Alex, Karen came around, they were, you know, and then they started to wrap the body. And then by the time we got outside, what? There were people trying to take pictures of her, of the wrapped, like, why? You know, at that point, I was too weak to fight, but people were fighting and fighting, mm. and we got into the jeep. I just told them to put the body on my lap. Like, I was just hoping, as it was wrapped, she could twitch, move, and then yeah. I will just unwrap it quickly and say, yes, yes, yes. It's okay. Mm. And then we got to Anyeke Hospital, and it didn't even move. The body didn't move at all. And then the nurses came out. Those ones were even very fast. Based. What happened? Can you unwrap the body? I said, yes, and I unwrapped it. And by the time I just, her face popped out, she was already foaming at the nose. Mm. Ah, I said, why? So did they actually tell you what they thought had happened? Or we were hearing different no things. Uh, different people, someone was saying, oh, um, maybe she had a brain hemorrhage. Someone said it was a um, aneurysm. I don't know if that's what they call aneurysm, it. Aneurysm, yeah. Aneurysm. And then it was a blood clot or something, or, you know, like the blood stops flowing to the brain and then you feel like the brains are... But she brains. wasn't, she wasn't ill before, was she? Eh? My friend, has never been sick. I can tell you the only thing I know that ever gets to her, the regular flu. Uh, do you remember what her last words to you were? Hmm. She said, she said to me, do you really, my friend died of this headache. I don't want to die. My friend complained of this headache. I said, you are not gonna die. Pray for me, pray for me. That's what she kept saying. And... So her last words to you were pray for pray me. For pray me, for me, pray for me. And we're praying. Oh, you will always be remembered, remember. that a lot of people didn't you know, understand the real Goldie? A whole lot of people did not. You know, it was so bad that, you know, when she got out of Big Brother, we we're trying to get interviews, we we're trying to do as much damage control as possible, and nobody was ready to interview this girl. The moment she died, everybody was outside the house. Mm. Oh, please, come out, really, we need you to talk. I was like, I am so not talking. I didn't even, it didn't register, like I said, mm. that all this was happening. And, you know, it was just so bad that, you know, at that point, they chose to celebrate her. She needed all that celebration. They didn't do it. Mm -hmm. I remember when she got out of Big Brother and, you know, she just, I don't know how, who gave her her phone. She saw all the hate tweets and she just called me. I, I mean, I can say this right now. She called me and she was like, Dear really, I am going to jump out of this window. I said, eh? If you try it. Mm -hmm. I started shouting at her, what is wrong with you? Why would you jump out of the window? And immediately I called Leslie Kasumba who you know, mm. and Jackie, and I said, please, can you go to the Hilton quickly, my friend, you know, and then they went, they were able to talk to her, and she was so scared, because they were saying if, they, if she comes back, they will stone her and stop. Mm. We had to get bodyguards, and I got to the airport an hour before I flight, and I was shouting, if anybody should touch this girl here, you know, and eventually mm. she were able to just get her out. So the Goldie that we saw um, on the Big Brother, or on Big Brother, was that mm. the real Goldie? That was the real that Goldie. Was the real in Goldie. And out. From the very onset when she got mm. on stage and you know she was all over the place. And you know, Goldie's sort of person who, when you guys saw rehearsals, people were judging her, oh she can't dance. I mean, she was a hard worker. You okay. I mean you guys saw it. So that was the real that was the real That was the real Goldie, know. always trying to get everything Uncensored and she could Goldie. Cook. Yeah, she spent a lot of time in the kitchen as well. I mean, she got back from the US and all she could think of was, oh, I have to feed there really. You know, because <laughs> she always said it, I'm going to change it from a size zero to a size something. And Goldie is the sort of person, you know, there's some of us that when we like, we really like. Mm. And we'll go all out to 
show how much we like. So she she really liked Prezzo? She was drawn to Prezzo because obviously she, I think Prezzo was the person that she, from the first day, you know, they were chatting and they were getting along and I was like, oh, thank God. Because I was really, you know, watching and I really wanted people to like her, you know, yeah, that sort of yeah, thing, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> please so. find a friend and get somebody close to you. So, she, so Prezzo was a, was a person that she kind was of the connected first person. With, yeah, yeah. They, 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 everyone was sipping champagne and white wine and they were chatting and they were laughing and I will say this, like, Prezzo, I know, I mean, he's watching, he's not watching. Prezzo always made Goldie laugh. Mm. Like, Goldie would laugh for hours on end. And I just liked that. Because okay. there were not too many people that made her laugh. So if, I mean, I made her laugh our own way. Your own you know, yes, but he always made her laugh. Okay. And I just said, okay, well, Prezzo, we have to like him. Okay, so we talked about Prezzo in the Big Brother house and the fact that he was, well, you said he was separated. Yeah. Um, another something else that we found out after Goldie passed, uh, well, was that she was actually married. So yeah. why did she keep that from people? Like I said, I, I just felt it was her. That, I mean, it's Goldie's life, really. And you know you know what they said. Was my she life. happily married? Yes, she was very happily married. I, I think I was one of the very few opportunities to know about the marriage. And um, people were insinuating here and there. They weren't so sure. But if she chose to keep that out of the press, I mean, as a friend, I respected that, honestly. Mm. Like, 110%. I didn't know about the ex-wife. I knew that, you know, husband had kids from mm -hmm. someone else mm -hmm. which she did tell me she confided in me but I didn't know about the woman I felt the woman was out of the picture but you know all of these things kept coming out and she she and her husband had a wonderful relationship Andrew you know he was badly shaken by this and all the while that you know I was always in the house and the husband was around you know he would you know come back from work buy her stuff cook her pasta you know and all of that and they were like you know they had their moments mm. and, and and you did say that um, well they must have been happy to a certain extent. Very she happy. did say that she was trying to have children this year. Yes, she was going to have kids this year. And one other thing was, every song Goldie did, her husband listened to it first. And if Andrew didn't approve, she would have to go and do another song. Every video she shot, if I was with her, okay, of course, I would watch it first. You know, we'd watch it together and then she would send it to Andrew immediately. And Andrew would watch and then we have to wait for what Andrew thinks. And Andrew would send his, you know, his like critical evaluation. Oh, very good video. There's a video we haven't released, she did with Navio, mm -hmm. which was the very first video she shot. Ski Bobo was the last mm -hmm. one. I was when I was pushing her, release Ski Bobo, release Ski Bobo, because she had that girl next door look. We wanted people to see her differently. Yeah. And when she did the video with Navio, she went sexy, you know. And then her husband said, wow, I've never seen you this sexy before. And she's like, Whoo! And yeah, he, Andrew he approved? likes it. He approved. Okay. He liked it, but he was like, oh, he felt it was very sexy. A little raunchy, but he mm. thought it was, you know, I mean, her... She wasn't covered up with layers and layers of edgy clothes and stuff. And I mean, he always, he had like a first hand in her career. Like mm. he always knew what was going on with her. I mean, he wasn't that distant husband who... So he was very, very hands-on. Very hands-on okay. deck. I mean, you talked about the fact that she loved this nectar. What other things did Goldie love? She loved to cook. She loved to cook. You know, she always liked people around her. She loved to gist. Ah, Goldie can talk for Africa. She liked gist. You know, and then anybody who comes, she say, any gist, anything for the girls, you know. And of course, she loved fashion. We all know how crazy she was about fashion. She even had stuff that she would buy that wasn't outrageously expensive. And she wore it and she looked like a million dollars. She loved her makeup. Ah! She loved her little iPod with speakers. Um, and she loved her hair, blonde hair. Lace <laughs> wig. Goldie had lace wigs. Christ. Lace wigs for days. What? In lace wigs, she loved her lace wigs. She loved jewelry, especially. I, I mean, when we were dressing up for her, when we were about to bury her, I made sure that she wore a lot of them. Because I just said okay. to myself, she would like to have all of these things around her. Okay. Yeah, and she loved perfumes. And, um, um, oof, I have to, I mean, ah, she loved gadgets. What? She had every new phone. And every new phone, every new and phone. computer, she just gadget, yeah. I'm buying it, I should not buy it. I'll be like, for crying out loud, you'll buy it even before I <laughs> So just go ahead and buy it. Okay, my very, very last question. Yeah. Um, if she was right here with you, what do you think she'd say? She would just hit me playfully. She was always very playful. And she would just say, Imbiri Coco, Almond Eyes, Tools. I'm sorry, I'm not looking you in the face. I can't, I can't. You know, and okay. she'll just be very happy and just, she'll just be the person that she always was, you know. And sweetie, if you're watching this right now, just know, just know, you know, that really, honestly, wherever you are, you know, like I always held in high esteem from the depths of my heart. I swear it. 
I've never loved anyone like you. You've been the best friend ever. You've been my guidance counselor. You've been my therapist. You've been my sounding board. You've been my support system. May your soul rest in peace.